Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Alberto from A to Z Tactical Academy and today I want to show you the beginnings of how to fight with an expandable baton. Fighting with an expandable baton, which could be expanded into fighting with sticks or any object that you hold in one hand. Expandable batons, right? Like the one I have here. Um, they're available you can buy them uh, I, I bought mine on Amazon right uh, you can buy them in a lot of places you do have to check your jurisdiction uh, these are illegal in some states I know for a fact that California uh, does not allow people to use expandable metal batons uh, those are illegal in California um, I live in Arizona they're still legal here in Arizona but there are some states in which they're not the other part about expandable batons, metal expandable batons, is that they could be considered uh, lethal force, right? You, depending on where you hit, you definitely could cause some severe damage uh, to someone. Um, so, uh, with that out of the way, uh, there are some techniques that you should be aware of when you're trying to use one of these. Um, you could translate this into weapons of environment right environment opportunity you could get a, a a stick you could get a cell phone you can get a bottle of water kitchen knife um, pretty much whatever you can hold in your hand as a force multiplier and the techniques would translate the same you would have to apply the techniques the exact same way so i want to go over some basic stuff but Full disclaimer here, you cannot learn to fight with a baton or with a single stick watching YouTube videos. This is something that's going to require you to have a partner or go to a studio that actually teaches uh, these techniques uh, in a controlled environment and then to make it an extra point or an extra thing that you have to do, you have to test them. Um, one thing is to drill with them and learn how to move the stick and move your body around it. A much, much different thing would be to actually test it with an opponent and, and see if it actually works, right? Some of these techniques that I've seen on the internet where you trap the arm and then you embellish and then you get the, the back of the neck and you submit a person, uh, it's extremely hard to get it to work with a non-compliant combatant right like if your partner doesn't want to be taken down uh, you're not going to make it work so you have to test it right so uh that aside my recommendation is start with something cheap like just a stick get a broom an old one cut the stick in half um you know and then you just learn to move your wrist your elbow your arm learn to be aware of where your head and the rest of your body is uh, learn to move your feet you could do that solo until you get really good at it before you go through the expense of wine one of these uh, this is completely useless if you don't know how to use it um, then later on i would say uh, you have to get used to hitting something you have to hit a target um, my recommendation would be an old tire a basketball hung off, uh, you know, a, a, a bag or whatever, a piece of uh, rope. Um, you could get a, a four by four standing on a stand, like a Christmas tree stand, and get used to hitting something. Uh, it will be very different once you start hitting a target with force. Your your fingers would have to hold that uh, that stick, right? So <clears throat> uh, there is a difference other than just hitting there. And finally, the final step would be get a willing partner and start with maybe like foam swords, right? The stuff they sell for kids and uh, get two of those and get a partner, somebody to train with you and then try the stuff. You have to try it. There are some concepts like measure um, that there's just no way to learn them over YouTube and there's no way to learn them solo. Um, and I'll show you some of my fights uh, where I, I'm in full gear and we're going to, uh, you know, full contact, if you will. Anyway, so with a spandable baton, um, you should not try to expand it 
on the upswing, you should always do it on the downswing. Let me uh, take my microphone off and set the camera a little further out and then show you some of these basic techniques. All right, so I am here in my garage. Um, I have this this uh, expandable metal baton. It, it does come with its, uh, let me see if I can get it out here. It does come with this little nylon holster. Uh, I think it's completely useless because it's, it's supposed to go here like vertical. Um, this is intended more like for a security guard, if you will, to have it this way. Um, if I was carrying a an expandable baton for the fence, I would carry it in a horizontal position somewhere around the belt line, right? But I definitely wouldn't carry this. It's just too this is just too heavy, too cumbersome, and I think a, a little bit unnecessary. You could fight with it completely uh, close like this. Uh, it's the same techniques. So anyway, setting this aside um, again. You should not open these on the upswing. You should always open them on the downswing. So doing this may result in, you know, not consistent. Uh, now I gotta close this. But on the downswing, it works really easy. It's it's very quick. To close them, you know, these inertial batons are, are very hard to close. You actually have to impact them on the floor and, and close them out because it, it's, you know, it's not going to close. Okay. So close like this. If you get it, all you have to do is just move your wrist like this and it opens. It's very easy on the downswing. Ah, sorry about that. And it's more difficult to do it on the upswing. So if you need to get it, this is really quick to do and uh, more consistent. The other thing, um, let me switch to a stick, uh, something that doesn't go black on black so you can see it better. Some of these are my Cali sticks. So um, The other thing is this, <clears throat> everything in the stick is a weapon, right? Obviously the impact zone is here, but if this gets grabbed and trapped, this, the puño if you will in uh, Filipino martial arts, that also works, right? So. You could hit, and if this gets strapped, you can also use this part, this part, to hit. Um, your first hit should not be from your weak side. I am right-handed. My first would be from the right towards the left. Right? I would never start from the left to the right. Um, I am going to be more controlled and stronger if I start from the right towards the left. I could go um, at a diagonal or I could go very vertical, if you will. I would not start with a horizontal or an upswing move. My first one would be from my strong side, I'm right-handed, so from my right, and a 45 degree or an, a downward hit. After that, if I have gotten my measure right, my approach to my opponent right, then I can go into other things like downward swings from the left, from the top, you name it, right? All this other stuff. But you got to start with your strong side from the top. Uh, another thing you have to keep in mind, you have to move your feet. If you just sit stationary trying to do this, it's just not going to work, right? So you have to... I call it hiding behind the stick, but you know, you, so when you hit with your, when you throw a hit with your right hand, your right foot should move forward. And in effect, I am behind the stick. So if something else is impacting the stick, another stick, an opponent, a knife, you name it, I am behind it. If I'm hidden from my left, my left foot should come forward so that I am again behind the stick, right? I'm protected. So if you're gonna do one, two combinations, your feet should move right, left. <clears throat> Let me lower this so you can see my feet. All right, I lower the camera a little bit. Hopefully you can see my feet. All right, so the other part is uh, your feet should move with you. So when you throw your first 
strike from the right top, your right foot, your dominant foot should move forward and you should blade like this. If you're going to throw a left strike, then you should be positioned this way. So, in effect, you're going to be hiding behind the stick this way or this way. You can move forward by moving your feet or you can move back or you can stay stationary by doing steps. All right. I guess that's lesson one. Practice that, get a stick. This is super cheap to do. It's an old broom that I just cut in half, uh, broom uh, stick. And then just get used to these movements. Get used to moving your feet. That would be a lot more important later on as we go into these, uh, these videos. And uh, yeah, get into this before you can get to an opponent. Um, hopefully this will be like a three or four video uh, series and uh, we can get a little bit more into it. I wouldn't worry about the double sticks. Yeah, it's flashy as heck. It looks cool, but it's, it's not necessary, right? Um, if you want to, if you want to challenge yourself more, you can kind of start doing this with the left hand and see if you can actually be left-hander as well, right? Like, move your feet. Just think that every time you move the stick, your feet are going to move with it. They're an extension of the stick, your hand, your body. It's just a beginning taste of what it is to fight with a stick. I'll uh, put some of my fights here uh, and uh, have fun. Nice. 